Basal Cell Nevis Syndrome. Basal Cell Nevis Syndrome, also known as Nevoid Basal Cell Carcinoma Syndrome, NBCCS, or gorlin gold Syndrome, was first described in literature in 1894, but was not fully recognized as a distinct entity until 1960 when Gorlin and Galtz termed the disease. NBCCS is an autosomal disease that is caused by a mutation in the PTCH1 gene on chromosome 9q22.1-q31. There are many diseases associated with NBCCS, such as multiple odontogenic keratocysts, OKCs, multiple nevoid basal cell carcinomas of the skin, skeletal CNS, and eye abnormalities. NBCCS will commonly appear early in age, around puberty. It is common in both sexes and more common in lighter tone skinned individuals who have higher exposure to UV light. When determining if a patient could be at risk for getting NBCCS, family history is a good criterion in aiding diagnosis. There are two criteria to follow when looking at the family history of the patient, the major criteria and the minor criteria. The major criteria includes multiple BCC in family, OKCs of jaw, and palmar or plantar pits. The minor criteria include macrocephaly, congenital malformations, and skeletal abnormalities. When looking at general findings associated with NBCCS, there are a few symptoms that are found in a majority of patients. OKCs occur in 90% of the cases, and it is most commonly found in the mandible. 90% of patients with NBCCS also show multiple nevoid basal cell carcinoma, which frequently appears on the face, trunk, and limbs. Other general findings include congenital skeletal abnormalities, like bifid ribs and synostosis, ectopic calcifications of the falx cerebri, and plantar and palmar pits. In addition to OKCs and basal cell carcinomas, we see other symptoms in the facial region. These include increased head circumference, frontal and temporal bossing of the face, wide-set eyes, and ophthalmic issues. Intraoral findings can include high arched palate, malocclusion, cleft lip, and palate. Here we see a series of images depicting intraoral findings of patient with NBCCS, including anterior open bite and high arched palate. In order to diagnose NBCCS, genetic testing can be completed. Clinical diagnosis is accomplished by the presence of two or more high importance symptoms or the presence of one high importance and two or more low importance symptoms. The table shown lists the symptoms considered high and low importance. Histologically, OKCs appear as a uniformly thick squamous epithelial lining with the absence of rudy pegs. This gives the basal layer of the epithelium a tombstone appearance. The surface epithelium will be perikeratinized. The tissue will appear as pearly papules that, when left untreated, can ulcerate. Recognizing OKCs radiographically is important in the diagnosis of NBCCS. Panoramic radiographs, computed tomography, CT, as well as magnetic resonance imaging, MRI, can all be used to help diagnose and evaluate OKCs. Currently, CT is the preferred method to evaluate OKCs in patients. The image to the left is a series of CBCT cross-sections demonstrating OKCs. The image to the right is a 3D rendering of a patient's right mandible with NBCCS-associated OKC. Other radiographic features to look for in diagnosing NBCCS include areas of radiolucency around crowns of unerupted teeth and calcifications of the falx cerebri. These are seen in the associated images. OKCs can appear unilocular in 80% of cases, but can also appear multilocular. Radiographic features of an OKC include a well-defined radiolucent lesion in the posterior of the mandible, a large lesion 
with a minimal amount of septa and little expansion in the buccolingual direction. OKCs can be found periapically and have potential to demonstrate cortical plate expansion, erosion, and damage to other nearby structures. The image demonstrates that while uncommon, OKCs can present in the maxilla. OKCs can be commonly mistaken for dentigerous cysts. Dentigerous cysts are the second most common cyst in the jaw and develop from the reduced enamel epithelium. They tend to be slow growing, but they can show some clinical swelling in the face, along with facial asymmetry and missing teeth. The epicenter is coronal to the crown of the associated tooth and has the potential to displace the inferior alveolar nerve canal, maxillary sinus, and teeth. Dentigerous cysts tend to expand bone more significantly and are more likely to cause root resorption than OKCs. Dentigerous cysts are associated with impacted teeth. Similar to OKCs, dentigerous cysts can also appear radiolucent on radiographs. They are also well-defined and corticated. The frequent unilocular appearance and absence of septa can cause it to be confused with unilocular OKCs. A defining feature of a dentigerous cyst is that it contacts the tooth at the level of the CEJ. Radicular cysts can also be commonly mistaken for OKCs. Radicular cysts originate from the rests of malices, which proliferate as a result of signals from non-vital teeth and inflammatory mediators. They are often located in the periapical areas of non-vital teeth. This differentiates it from the OKCs, which would be associated with vital teeth. Radicular cysts can range from asymptomatic to severe pain and swelling. Radicular cysts are radiolucent, round in shape, and can be found at the apex of teeth. Radicular cysts appear unilocular and are associated with loss of lamina dura in the periapical region. One radiographic clue that could indicate a radicular cyst over an OKC is that as a result of endodontic treatment on an involved non-vital tooth, a radicular cyst can display iron-like density. Please note, OKCs can appear unilocular, are radiolucent, and can even be found at the apex of teeth. This is why it can be sometimes challenging to distinguish OKCs from radicular cysts. Note the image to the right. It depicts a panoramic radiograph. In the maxilla, a round, unilocular, and radiolucent cyst can be seen at the apex of the anterior teeth. Another differential diagnosis for NBCCS is cherubism. Cherubism is a genetic autoinflammatory disease present in children. Cherubism is a time-dependent disease, meaning the lesions will eventually heal on their own. It is associated with a mutation in SH3 BP2 gene and typically appears in young children, sometime between the ages of two and six. Clinically, it will often appear as a bilateral, asymptomatic but firm enlargement of the jaw. The disease can cause expansion in the maxilla, which leads to swelling in the cheeks. Extreme swelling in the maxilla can result in upturned eyes. Lesion epicenters associated with cherubism can be found in the maxillary tuberosity as well as the body and ramus of the mandible. Radiographically, lesions associated with cherubism can appear radiotranslucent with fine granular bone striations and multilocular with borders that are corticated and well-defined. Additionally, the lesions of cherubism can move teeth in an anterior or mesial direction. OKCs associated with NBCCS can also appear radiotranslucent and can be found in the jaws. However, cherubism, unlike NBCCS, is bilateral and produces a larger expansion of the jaw. Unique to cherubism is that its lesions can move teeth in an anterior or mesial direction. When differentiating NBCCS from cherubism, note that lesions associated with cherubism are found in young children and eventually go away without treatment. Multiple myeloma is a malignancy of the hematopoietic system involving plasma cells. The median age of diagnosis is in the seventh decade and is rare under the age of 40. The age range is much higher than the median age for NBCCS. 
multiple myeloma is seen in a higher rate of males, where NBCCS has an equal presence in both males and females. The plasma cells in multiple myeloma produce lambda chain antibodies and are associated with proteoglycan CD138. Patients with multiple myeloma are also positive for Bentz Jones proteins in their urine. A combination of these three is indicative of multiple myeloma. Multiple myeloma can be characterized by multifocal osteolytic lesions. These often occur in the skull, vertebrae, and ribs, but can occur in many other bones. The radiographic appearance is often described as a punched out lesion, with each lesion being one to four centimeters in diameter. It tends to appear in the mandible more often than maxilla, similar to OKCs. The lesions are well-defined with a non-sclerotic border. Like OKC, they can appear either multi or unilocular. Patients who use bisphosphonates show less cortical plate rupture than patients who do not use it. There are several treatment options depending on the symptoms that are presenting. OKCs can be treated by surgical enucleation, curatage, and resection. Surgical enucleation is the most conservative option. This also has the highest rate of recurrence due to the epithelial lining remaining at the site. Curatage can be added to the treatment plan and involves removing a small amount of surrounding bone. Curatage can be completed by mechanical or chemical means. Mechanical curatage involves using a curette to remove 1 to 2 millimeters of surrounding bone. Chemical curatage is most commonly completed with carnoid solution. Carnoid solution is a combination of ethanol, chloroform, glacial acetic acid, and ferric chloride. Carnoid solution is usually contraindicated in the maxilla as there is extra risk of necrosis of the maxillary, sinus, and nasal cavity. Partial resection is the most radical and aggressive treatment and involves the removal of the lesion and five millimeters of healthy bone surrounding it. Basal cell carcinomas also have their own set of treatment options. Surgical treatment is often used for high-risk lesions. Excision can be used for a small number of lesions, especially if difficult to treat with other methods. Ma's micrographic surgery is a technique that involves the precise removal of lesions with microscopic margins. This technique shows minimal damage to healthy tissue and has the highest success rate. Chemotherapeutics can also be used and are most successful when working with single lesions. Common chemotherapeutics used include 5-fluorouracil and imiquimod. Imiquimod has been shown to have limited effect as a solo cure, but it is often used as an adjuvant to surgical cures. Topical chemotherapeutics often have lower compliance as they require a longer duration of use. Treatments for basal cell carcinomas have also shown success by targeting genes directly. Cyclopamine is a chemical that has been shown to inhibit SHH, which can be involved in tumor formation in adults. Cyclopamine has also been shown to reduce cell proliferation. Patients using cyclopamine have also shown apoptosis of tumor cells and differentiation of high-grade tumor cells. Radiation therapy is generally contraindicated as it can lead to an increase in basal cell carcinomas.